Let us pray. Holy God, we, we come to you with these, these stories that, that just are, are full of light and full of so much light we almost can't even imagine it. Give us imaginations for understanding what it is you are saying to us. In Jesus' name, amen. The risk of fiddling a little more, I'm just going to lower this a little bit. I, that's okay. I'm good. Thank you. <clears throat> Why me? Why me? Or here's another one we ask. Why them? Why them? It's a question we ask when things are hard. And when things seem unfair, it's also a question we ask when things are good and when fortune and when opportunity seems to be smiling on us or someone else. And these are the questions that I believe both of our readings today prompt in us and in others. Why did God choose Israel? Why did God the beginning of the choice of Israel through Abraham and Sarah. Why Abraham and Sarah? Why Mary? Why us? Let's start with Israel. Why Israel? At the very end of Jesus Christ Superstar, and words that just feel like they're etched in my, in my mind, in my memory, because I've heard it so many times, Jesus Christ Superstar, that Judas is singing right at the end, and it's almost like a reprise, and he's, he asks a question. He sings, why'd you pick such a backward time in such a strange land? If you'd come today, you'd have reached the whole nation. Israel in 4 BC had no mass communication. Don't you get me wrong. I only want to know. Why Israel? Well, today, the prophet Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, is speaking directly to the Israelites in yet another one of their series of hard times, this time a time of punishment for their lack of faith. And yet, the prophet comes to them with hope. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has shone around you and risen around you. Now, why? Why, we ask, didn't God, if we really think about their whole history, why didn't God just give up on Israel? Why did God keep lifting the Israelites up when they kept getting into trouble? Now, yes, God had promised Abraham a great nation all those years ago, promising, I will be your God and you will be my people. But Israel wavered time after time. And so why did God keep coming back to them? In fact, why did God pick Abraham and Sarah in the first place? Why them? We've been studying the story of Abraham in our joint Bible studies, our monthly Bible studies now for the past five months with the folks from Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. And that question why Abraham and Sarah? Because that's what we've been studying. We have not come up with a great answer to that question. Why Abraham and Sarah? I think we all have our own ideas. I know I do. But I also often wonder whether maybe God went to some other people first and didn't get the answer God wanted. Did you ever hear this story? It's a story of a, um, a couple of angels up in heaven. And there's sort of the senior angel, and then there's the rookie angel. The senior angel is showing the rookie the ropes, and so he's showing the angel, imagine it, the, the, the full glory of the of the universe and all the stars and the galaxies, this sort of amazing thing. And then as, he's, as, as the one angel, the, the experienced one is showing the rookie, they come to this one star that they call, that, that we call, I should say, the sun. And the senior angel 
points to, while looking at the sun, points to a rather insignificant, sort of a small, a little ball that's slowly turning on its axis. It, it looked like a sort of a dull and kind of dirty. Well, you know, it actually looked, the story tells it, like a used tennis ball. And the older angel says, I want you to watch this one particularly closely. Why? The other angel asked, why? It looks kind of small and a mess. What's so special about that one? Ah, this is the famous visited planet. Do you mean to tell me that our great and glorious prince went down in person to that little ball why? Why would he do that? Do you mean to tell me that, that our great and glorious prince stooped down so low to become one of these creeping and crawling creatures on that floating ball? That little ball. Well, yes, I do. And I don't think he'd like you saying this stuff about them in that tone of voice. For strange as it may seem, he loves them. Friends, why Israel? Why Abraham and Sarah? Why Mary? Why Christmas, for that matter? Because first and foremost, God loves us. And also, God never gives up on us. The story of the Bible is a story of a God choosing not only never to give up on us, but also choosing to work through the most surprising of people, beginning with Israel. A small Israel was a small third-rate power that was defeated time and again, and who, like all of us, Individually and as a nation, they didn't always live up to their covenant with God. And yet God keeps coming back to them time and again to lift them up and to work through them. Or as Isaiah puts it after saying that this light's going to shine around you, Isaiah says this to them on behalf of God and, 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 and says then, nations shall come to your light. Israel kept messing up and God kept coming back. Why them? And also, why Mary? Imagine it. Imagine the, the, the story, the Annunciation. Things were actually going just about as planned as they were expected to go for Mary. She'd been given away by her father to be married to this local carpenter. And everything was on track. And then this. And imagine how she felt. One minute things are on track, and the next minute the angel Gabriel is saying to her, Greetings, favored one. You will conceive a son by the name of Jesus, and he will be called Son of the Most High. His kingdom will never end. How can this be? I'm a virgin. The answer? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and a child will be born called Son of God, for nothing is impossible with God. Now, Mary doesn't say it, but she had to have been thinking, why me? Why am I the one to bear the long-awaited Messiah? What's so special about me? But she must have also been asking other questions, knowing the culture of the time, asking why me? Like, how am I going to explain this to Joseph or to my parents, or to the town of Nazareth. And likewise, I sometimes wonder if the angel Gabriel might have stopped at some others before getting to Mary. And their response might have been, no thank you, Mr. Angel. I think I'll take a pass on that. But Mary does not say no. Of course she says yes. She says Listen to these words. She says, here I am. Let it be with me according to your word. Among the boldest words in the entire Bible. Actually, when you think about it, 
They're the same words we pray every week. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But still, come on. What's this favored one stuff? Was she really favored by God? Why did this 13-year-old girl, what did she do to earn this amazing honor of bearing the long-awaited Messiah? The short answer, it seems to me, is that we do not know. Just like we don't know why Abraham and Sarah were chosen. Which is actually, I believe, kind of the point. It's kind of the point. Was there something extraordinary that they had done to earn this honor? Why did God pick them as a essential workers, as essential workers in God's factory of love? Why did God choose them to be super spreaders of that love? The answer to that question is the same answer to the question, why does God choose us? What's so special about you and me and really anybody? That the God of creation, who created that, not only that little ball, but all that's around it, that whole galaxy, why did God choose us to carry the message of love? Why us? Because God loves us, and God wants us to love him back, and God wants us to love each other. And apparently, God has confidence that we can do that. Why else would God choose us? Why else would God choose to become one of us? I think a key message from both of our readings today is that God sees each of us as essential workers in that divine factory of love. And that God believes that each of us can truly be super spreaders of that love, which is exactly what the Son of the Most High, what Jesus teaches us repeatedly, even though by no means does Jesus pretend that it's easy to do the things that make for love. You know, things like turning the other cheek and loving our enemies and going the extra mile and forgiving those who trespass against us and doing unto others as we would have them do unto us. But easy though it may not be, God is counting on us to be partners helping take care of that tiny, this tiny used tennis ball that we live on and all of its creeping, crawling creatures. It's a big job, but God has confidence in, but God has confidence in us because, and really it's the angel who gives us the reason why God has confidence in us, because nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen.